Well, greetings and grand rising, everyone, and good afternoon to our friends who are on the far, far east coast. Welcome to our Quantum Soul Alchemy, 30 Days of Filling into Abundance Challenge, day number 27. Now, we are almost to the finish line, so congratulations, everyone, and thank you for putting in the time and putting in the effort towards completing this challenge with us. So for today, we will be discussing our essential oils for safety as well as enhancing our emotional well-being. So if we will follow along with us in our Quantum Soul Alchemy journal, we are on page number 121. Now, if you do not have your Quantum Soul Alchemy journal, you may get one on our website at whliam.com, or you may get one on amazon.com. So we have two cover version options for you. So this is our light cover version, and we have our dark cover version here. Now, they come in both hardcover and paperback. So it is whatever your reference. Um, now, our Quantum Soul Alchemy Journal contains all of our challenges that we've completed from day one going up through day 30. Now, if you have not been able to catch all of our videos from day one through day 30, you may do so by registering for our online course that is free. And it is at whliam.com forward slash courses. That is C-O-U-R-S-E-S. -E okay. And there you can gain access to our support group and be able to share your experiences as you're going through this journey. So again, that is whliam.com forward slash courses. The link is available in this video's description below. Now let's get into the meat of our discussion today. Yes, our essential oils. We're going to dive into the fragrant world of nature's own concoction for nurturing our emotional well-being. So essential oils are extremely potent. Of course, we know this. And when using them, we want to be mindful of how we are incorporating them into our daily lives. But they offer this enhanced pathway of stress relief and emotional balance and invoking certain moods. So we're going to explore how these aromatic treasures can support our journey towards emotional wellness. Now, let's get into safety first. Yes, I cannot stress this enough. Now, when I personally craft essential oil blends in my business, I am sure to you know, adhere to all of our safety recommendations. Now, one of the books that I follow religiously in terms of essential oil safety is entitled um, Essential Oil Safety, A Guide for Healthcare Professionals. And this is by Tisserand and Young. Again, the authors are Tisserand and Young. You can get this book wherever you know books are sold or on Amazon.com. Again, this is Essential Oil Safety. And this book contains all of the essential oils pretty much that we use daily and even those you've probably never even heard of. And they have lab tested the safety you know, points for how to use these oils and the recommendations depending upon the countries. So some countries have certain limitations where others are a bit more lax. So depending upon where you are in the world, you want to be sure that you are adhering to these safety guidelines. This is to, of course, keep your clients safe, but also to keep you and your business safe. So if you are using your essential oils in the business, I highly recommend this book. But it is also easily understood by everyone. So even if you are a hobbyist and you want to keep your own family safe, you safe, I recommend this book. Again, it's Essential Oil Safety, a Guide for Healthcare Professionals, written by Tisserand and Young. So we want to understand how to... Um, use these concentrated oils in a safe way. So you want to dilute them. Always, you're always going to dilute an essential oil. It is so easy to enhance yourself with these aromas and think that, oh, it's okay to drop these in the bathtub because the bathtub is just a huge tub of water. Well, you have to remember, essential oils are oils. They will not readily mix with water. So as it is floating on the surface, it touches your skin, you could have a severe allergic reaction. So you want to be certain that you are using these in a safe way. If you're trying to use essential oils in a bathtub, you want to mix it with a different mean or a different carrier. 
in many instances, you're going to use a carrier oil. That is what we mean. It is going to carry the different properties and mix up or dilute the essential oil so that it can be safely used or used in a more safe way. You can also use salts. Salts can be carriers of essential oil. As you are using a cup of salt, you want to mix a few drops of oil, maybe two or three. You could also drop the oils in the carrier oil and then put that carrier oil on the salt and just stir the salt until each of the um, pieces are covered in oil. This can help to dilute it when you're using it in the bathtub setting. That would make it a lot safer than just dropping the oil on the water surface and thinking that it's going to be a lot safer for you because that's not the case, okay? So using other means of safety, we also want to avoid certain parts of the body. If you are using essential oils for the first time or a particular oil for the first time, do a spot test first. You want to either use the inside of the elbow or the fold of the elbow or the back of the knee. These are two areas that are very sensitive on the body, but you can easily or you know, sometimes easily see in the back of your knee, but you can easily see the elbow in terms of if there is a slight allergic reaction or a severe allergic reaction. And this is a part of the body that you can wrap and still be able to use your limbs and things of that nature. So if you do have an allergic reaction, you're still able to function or get to a medical professional to help you. Always consult with your medical professionals before you want to incorporate any type of holistic method into your lifestyle. But if you're not consulting with your medical professionals, you're running that risk. So I would always recommend that as well. So of course you're going to spot test, but the areas to avoid would be anything that deals with the sinuses most definitely. So do not put oils directly in the mouth or the throat. So essential oils, that's a no-no to put directly in the mouth. You do not want to put essential oils nor diffuse them directly into the eyes. So avoid getting the, um, the mist in the eye or in the duct of the eye or into the nasal passage, um, into your sinuses. So ear, nose, and throat, of course, avoid essential oils being, you know, undiluted, putting directly in the ear. Avoid those areas because these can cause um, a lot of damage that could be irreparable. So just be safe and consult with your allergist or your physician before you start using oils if you are still unsure about that, okay? All righty. So now we will move to our practical application, ways in which we can incorporate essential oils into our daily lives. So we'll start with, of course, diffusion. So yes, our aerosol or our personal aerosol or our personal Glade scent for the day. You can use a diffuser by putting um, a certain amount of water and a few drops of essential oil or a few drops of your carrier and essential oil into the diffuser where it will diffuse it into the air and allow you to enhance the emotional well-being or to enhance and invoke a certain mood within the room or the space that you're working within. You can get a diffuser from many of the online shops or even the dollar store. So your diffusers are very widely available and they come in all types, um, shapes, sizes, just depending upon how long you want to use it, you may want to get a larger diffuser. If you're just looking for a few minutes, then a dollar store diffuser would work just fine. Now, if you're looking for a more direct or um, impactful means of delivering your essential oil aromatherapy, then you can use a inhaler, or excuse me, an inhaler. You can create these on your own. You don't necessarily have to buy a certain item to create an inhaler. You can actually put a few drops of your essential oils on a cotton ball or a piece of fabric and put that inside of a plastic bag. This would allow you the ability to carry around your personal inhaler during moments of, of high stress where you need to calm yourself or um, in public spaces where you may experience a lot of anxiety. Having your personal inhaler that is um, decorated with lavender or frankincense or some other essential oil that would invoke a mood of calmness 
that could help immensely for those who are experiencing these types of mental stressors. So you can use your personal inhaler. I would recommend that you would use it around the house first, just to test to see how your body is going to react to you inhaling such a strong aroma in a short span of time or in a smaller space, so to speak. So you want to, of course, always test your essential oils before you start using them regularly. And testing at home can help with that when you're dealing with a personal inhaler delivery method. Another option would be, um, let's see, scented jewelry. So yes, you can use jewelry pieces such as lava stone as holders for essential oil drops because those stones are very porous. So you can use it like um, an emotional support system, so to speak, similar to your inhaler. You can just inhale your lava stones or the aroma from the stones. Now, you don't have to use particular types of jewelry for this, but you always want to make sure they are porous. So yes, lava stone works, but there are other types of stones such as different river rocks that are porous as well. So if you can find some river rock gemstones, then you can drop your essential oils on those river rocks. Again, because it is going to be touching the skin, you want to make sure it is diluted before you put it into the stone. So dilute the oil first and then put the drops in the stone or put the drops on the stone. This way you won't have to have the irritation of having such a strongly concentrated oil directly on the skin. Now on our website, we actually sell a lava stone bracelet. So this is a rainbow lava stone bracelet on whliam.com forward slash shop. I had to think of the name. That's why I was like, um, <laughs> so I had to think of the web address, but I'll also put that in the link in our video's description below. But yes, we do create lava stone bracelets so that you can have your own aromatherapy treatment wherever you decide to go. Just carry it in your bracelet. Now, another means of delivery would be using candles. Now, a few days ago, we spoke about our candle magic ceremony, and one of the steps would be to dress the candle in your um, anointed oil. Instead of using an anointed oil, you can use your scented or aromatherapy oil blend. This way you can rub the candle down in oil, or you can put a few drops of oil on the flat top surface of your candle. So we're speaking about your pillar candles or your votif candles. Candles that can sit inside of a glass jar where you can drop a few oils, um, put drops in it and allow it to burn. And as it burn, it will diffuse the oil or the essential oil aroma into the air. So this is another means that is highly effective because the oil or the candle wax burns slow. So this allows the essential oil to have a longer life term in terms of um, burning for your aromatherapy or invoking certain moods within the room. Now, you're just going to use a ratio of about one part essential oil to about maybe four points of your carrier oil. So if you're looking to do a drop of essential oil, then you want essentially about four points or three, three to four drops of the carrier oil, okay? Sometimes you would want to just be on the very, very safe side and use about a tablespoon of oil or carrier oil to three drops of your essential oil. That is one of the most safest methods to use because it allows you to really dilute that essential oil. You still gain the properties of the aroma. You just you know, lessen the risk of getting the irritation when you're talking about direct skin contact, okay? But again, I recommend our book, which is by Tissa Randon Young, Essential Oil Safety, A Guide for Healthcare Professionals. If you truly want to get that, you know, lab recommended carrier oil to essential oil ratio, then grab that book. There is no guesswork involved. <laughs> All righty. And it is different for each essential oil. So what I gave you as far as the tablespoon to about three drops of essential oil is just a blanketed, you know, term for all of our essential oils, which you, if you want to do it for a professional means, then you would 
prefer or I would recommend you get that book, okay? So these are our different methods that we can use to deliver essential oils into our lives. We can use our diffusers. We can use our personal inhalers. We can use jewelry. We can also use our candles or other oil burners in order to diffuse that oil within our moods or excuse me, within our rooms to invoke certain moods. Now, if you have not yet, um, you know, been able to open your mind to understanding what the emotional center is, then I would recommend you go back to lesson one. So I know we have done quite a few days of work and each of these assignments are to help you understand your emotional center a bit better. Understanding this emotional center helps you see how you are responding to your environment and which emotions are driving your actions. So what is the emotional center? Emotional center is the area of the body that you tend to react or respond from in terms of your emotions. For example, if I am a thinker and I can talk myself into doing things, even if I'm uncomfortable, or talk myself out of things because I am uncomfortable, then I am a crown emotional center right? So in the terms of using your brain to react or respond to the environment, that is your emotional center. That is driving your actions and your emotions throughout the day. I'm thinking too much, or I'm not thinking enough, or, you know, over-processing, overthinking. So I would be a crown emotional center. For those of us who respond or react based off of fear or unsettled or security, desiring security or not having enough or um, putting in too many barriers, then you are a root emotional center. This would mean your root chakra is driving your action. So whatever is feeling unsettled within the body, within the mind, within the spirit, you're going to react out of fear, anxiety, those types of things where you are not able to connect with people for fear that things may go wrong, you know, something along those lines, then you would be an emotional center of the root chakra. For someone who has an emotional center of the heart, you're very feeling. You will respond or react to people based off of how these connections are driving you throughout the day. So let's say you are thinking of your children and emotionally you're driven just by the heart. So a lot of the the ways you're going to speak to them, the ways you're going to interact with them will be driven directly from feelings, not necessarily thinking about their reactions or how they're going to respond to you, not necessarily thinking through how you should respond to them. You may just go straight off of the heart. I'm going to do everything that I can. And a lot of times we will deny ourselves for our children. And that is based off of feeling. We're not thinking things through. So there's no balance in terms of the emotional center. So you're directly in the heart. You're, you're full in the heart <laughs> for someone who is, you know, reacting based off of your connections and your emotions in that fashion. And some people will do that. They will deny everything of themselves just for another person, a parent or, um, you know, someone that they are caring for within the home, things of that nature. So you would be a heart center emotional center or a heart chakra emotional center. Once we can understand where our emotional center lies, then we can hone in on the ways that we are responding to people, to the environment, to our, you know, interactions with these things throughout the day. That is going to allow you to control how you draw or attract certain energies to you. Because if we understand the laws of attraction, you will draw in what you're putting out. So if you're putting out a lot of stress, anxiety, someone who's in the root chakra of fear, then you would understand, okay, if that is my emotional center and I am responding to all of these situations negatively, then I understand I need to tweak the emotions dealing with security or dealing with feeling grounded. 
Once you understand that, you can turn your emotions into affirmations of feelings. I am safe. I am secure. I am confident. You can start doing actions throughout the day that help to confirm those affirmations of feelings. So you're looking to invoke a certain mood or a certain environment, then you can use your essential oils to do that. Especially when we are new in our emotional center and we're trying to understand these things and we don't know yet how to fix or how to adjust our emotional center to create a more secure, more grounded feeling, then we bring in our in our essential oils, then we bring in our crystals, we bring in our herbs, we bring in our candle magic. We bring in these different holistic methods that helps us to get our emotions in that mood. That way, once we're in it, we can understand this is what it feels like to be in this mode of being grounded, being secure. And we can learn that feeling and learn how to do things every day it helps to continue to bring those feelings to us. So once we know where our emotional center lies, we can understand how and why we are reacting to our environment and our people and our children a certain way. Then we can use our holistic techniques to bring in the emotions that we desire to actually emit, um, the, the desires that we actually want to live or um, the reality we want to create then we will make that a habit. We will learn how to invoke those moods automatically. We will do this with our affirmations, but confirming with our actions of using these holistic techniques, then it becomes automatic. This is where we start to manifest that reality that we want to live within because we're living in it now. And even though you may not feel secure in it now, this is why we're using the holistic techniques to help you feel secure in it now. That way you will start to automatically draw these things to you and it'll become habit and you'll understand, oh, this is what I'm doing every day. I didn't even have to think about this. I didn't have to think about being secure. I had on my bracelet and it, you know, I smelled my, you know, grounding aroma. If you're using, you know, patchouli or something along the lines of cedar wood, mm, it, you know, grounds me automatically. I'm, I'm good. I feel great. And you're invoking that emotion. You're invoking that mood. You're attracting those grounded energies to you. And this is what, this is where we become, we're, we're walking in and living in that new reality that we, you know, say it on day one that we were trying to manifest. So just understand that each of these assignments are important in helping us to get to that final stage. Now, if you still have questions or concerns, then you're in the course already online and you can reach out to me personally and we can discuss one on one how you can use these different types of methods, depending upon your particular emotional center. OK. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today and be here tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, and we will hit day number 28. Yes. Look, y'all, we're at the finish line. So yes, let's continue to do this. Let's continue to rock this. Thank you. And I will see you tomorrow.